Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, I still have not been working in the shop for the last week or two. So, let's just do a quick rambling. I have a lot of things that I've had on my mind, and some of it I, I think I would like to bounce these ideas off of you. Uh, first off, let me mention something real quick. I want to give an honorable mention to this thing right here. I don't know if you remember this project, but it's where you can take a regular battery and plug this in. And now I can either use this battery as a power source to supply power on the output here to supply power to do some testing. Also, you can use this as a Ryobi battery charger. Depends on where you put the knife switch. So if you switch it over here, then it becomes the power source. So now anything that I, when I turn it on, it's putting out that voltage that I have in control here on the output here. So I can use this as an easy power supply. But instead, if I need to charge a Ryobi battery, I can grab this, and plug anything up to between 12 and 36 volts, I think it is. I think it's 10 and 36 volts. Plug it in here, and then I can take and use this as a power source to charge up a Ryobi battery by moving the switch, knife switch over to that side. So I have it marked to help me keep track of which way is which power supply, Ryobi charger, and to off. So if it's here, now it's off. And then the only way you can use it, I can still plug in a power supply here with through these two terminals, and then I can turn it on and get the output here. Again, I just have to stay between 10 and, and 36 volts on my input on my power side and that will be able to get control out of this anyway uh, I use this thing a lot that's what I was going to mention is that if you haven't seen my project on this you might want to go look it up if you can't find it let me know just do a Ryobi and this thing should pop up on that list so um, anyway if you can't find it just let me know and I'll make sure I put it out there a um, couple other things I was thinking about is mm, sorry but that coffee is so good today uh, the other thing I was thinking about is that on my battery backup system I've been looking at my circuit that I have in the house in the main panel and I come to a realization that I have something going on there that most homeowners probably don't have and that is I do have natural gas and everything uh, my hot water heater my dryer, um, what else? The furnace, uh, and all these things are all on using natural gas. So therefore, in my house, I only have two circuits that are 240. One is my main furnace and air conditioner. That's on one fuse, and that draws a lot of power. When do you use the air conditioner? If I'm only going to use the furnace, I just have to have a 240 source to run my furnace. And it shouldn't take a lot of kilowatts to operate it because I'm not going to, as long as I don't turn the air on. So, anyway, the other circuit I have of the two is my well pump. And those are the only two. My well pump is a 15 amp circuit breaker and it's a 40 amp circuit breaker on my air conditioner uh, heater, my air conditioner furnace breaker. So my thought is, I saw a trick the other day where somebody took a 120 power source, he had a battery and an inverter that went to 120 volts, and he took and he used to plug in to both legs uh, using a, he, he used a 30 amp uh, 120 plug-in on the unit on his uh, solar generator and then he used a special cord that is called an L1430R and that cord apparently goes from a 130, 120 volt plug-in to a 240, um, 30 amp plug-in and so you can take that cord and plug it into a 120 volt inverter and plug it into a 240 plug-in um, where your generator would plug in for example on that type of circuit that will feed both legs 120 volts now you can't run 240 off of that even though both legs have 120 because they're on the 
they're on the single phase. It's all on one phase. And you need to have them uh, on two different phases if you're going to use it as a 240 outlet. It's all technical stuff. I don't, I don't understand it all 100% myself. But I do know that if you go in there and turn off the circuit breaker on all your 240s, in my case, that would be two of them, I can actually use this plug-in and plug in my 120 volt uh, inverter system into my house and, and run most everything in there. The only thing I can't run is my furnace and my well pump. So my thoughts on that is I thought, well that makes things a lot simpler and also the standby current that's drawing on an inverter is a hell of a lot less on a uh, 120 volt single phase than on a split phase 240 volt inverter. Big difference in the amount of draw it has. So you're much more efficient. And then what I thought I'd do is I'm just going to make mine a six and a half kilowatt uh, 120 volt inverter that I will use for the system. In fact, I'm, the one I'm, I'm looking at is the style is the LV6548 which is stands for 6.5 kilowatts and running on 48 volts and then all I have to do is buy a couple of server batteries and between those three components I have my power capability to plug into my house to run all my 120 volt uh, with a little bit of electrical cords and wiring and such and so that's probably my simplest way to go now again those two circuits that you can't run when you do that way is the well and the furnace air conditioner if I don't run the air conditioner I don't need a whole lot of volts to run the furnace so that 240 circuit that runs the furnace and the well pump has to be at least prop I would say at least a 3000 split phase service probably 4000 which is 2000 on each leg on the 240 each one runs 120 volts and they, they are on different phases. So the split phase unit up to um, a 4,000, maybe even, I could even put a the, the regular 6,000 unit, the 6048 unit. And that would give me what I need there. The problem with that inverter is that it sucks a lot of power on to use that unit as opposed to the single phase type. So, but if I'm only running those two circuits, I could run that circuit, I could run, find some inverter split phase that I should be able to use to run either my furnace or my well pump without any problem from that inverter. And then I can turn that on and off as I need to to run either the furnace or the well pump and it doesn't have to run 24 seven. So the whole house is now being uh, supplied 120 volts on all my 120 volt circuits on both sides on both legs of the panel and as long as I keep the um, double the uh, 240 breakers off I should I won't have any problem I can run that very easily and it'll give me a nice clean easy simple system to not only build but to be able to plug in and use into my house so that's what I'm kind of thinking of doing is I'm going to end up with two inverters. One will be a small split phase that should run those two circuits and then the regular one um, around six and a half kilowatts to run everything else in the house. I think it's going to be a good idea. Everything will be self-contained on the cart. I'll have some plug-ins on the wall outlets by the main panel and I can take the cat the, the cart that all this batteries and inverters will be on and roll it up to wherever I need to take the power cords and plug them in appropriately throw a couple of switches and I'm up and running so it, this is just when I run out of power I would get this out and start using it is all it would be there for is for emergency when I don't have power most of the time when I plug it in I probably will have power back within 12 hours almost always that's the way the power outages go and means that I can then take that battery pack, plug it into a 110 outlet, and let it charge back up over 24 hours, back up full charge without any problem. And I think that will get me uh, a pretty functional system with a very small amount of intrusiveness on my house or whatever kind of unit I'm going to use. So, 
and it'll be expandable. I could actually add a second inverter and do the whole house without having to deal with the transfer switch. I can then run the whole house anyway from my inverter if I decide to upgrade it to that size. So it'll be upgradable, which is one of the ideas I like about it. So that's why I think I'm going to start. I'm not quite ready to build it yet. I still have to deal with this other property. And once I got that complete, that project, then I'll probably take off on this. So uh, in the meantime, um, the other thing I was kind of looking at was, and what got me to thinking about it was that when I was thinking that if I go off grid and I'm off grid for a week, I won't have air conditioning because I won't be able to run my air conditioner off of my battery power system. And I could run the generator to run just the uh, air conditioner, but then I'd have to run it all the time in order to run the air conditioner. So I, I'm probably going to have to live without it was my thought, which led me to the idea of just a simple air cooler where you take a, uh, a regular styrofoam cooler fill it with ice, put a fan on it, blow into the outlet and blow out the other side and you get cold air coming out because it's blowing across the ice water. And it gives you an, at least coolness when you're, stand, when you're sitting or standing in front of it. And it makes it tolerable to be in a hot environment because that is blowing on you, keeping you cooler than the whole room would actually be. And I could go to something like that. What I, first off, if I do that, it would have to be a two-person fan setup. In other words, I would have two outlets coming out of it so that it would go to two places. Why would I do that? Yes, if I'm going to do it for me, I, you know I got to do it for you know who also, of course. So uh, I will have to have a unit that will give me that kind of usage. So that's one of the criteria. So I'm really kind of thinking out what kind of cooler could I make because there's a lot of designs out there. Um, but I basically am going to make, if I'm, if I end up doing this project, I guarantee you, it's going to be a monster in size and how you would refreeze the ice, the ice so that you can perpetually keep it going 24 hours a day if you had to by switching out your ice blocks that from the water blocks to the ice blocks are in their own containers type of thing. So anyway, I'm getting off of telling you too much about it probably because I still don't know myself but go out and look at some of these air coolers DIY air coolers out there or air conditioners they call it DIY air conditioners and you'll see what I'm talking about um, if I lived in a dry uh, environment like Arizona um, I probably would use something like that where the air would blow directly across the ice and pull the moisture and put it into the air because obviously down there that's a good thing a good swamp cooler they use in the south a lot swamp coolers and if you add that water drop that temperature that water then it becomes a real nice air cooler instead so uh, these are just some of the, my thoughts about it but if you live in an area where you have humidity like here Today it's like 66% humidity. So the last thing I want to do is throw more humidity uh, directly at me, basically. And so if I'm starting with 66 humidity air, putting it through there, it's going to come out of 80 or 90% humidity, I suspect, which is going to really aggravate the humidity in the environment instead. So most of these coolers are used outdoors, so it doesn't matter. But there are ways to make it to where you separate the cooling stages from the air movement so that the air does not directly go over the ice therefore it lasts much longer and it gives you a much cooler environment for a much longer period of time from the same amount of ice so I am going to probably do something like that but like I said I think I'm going to probably need a case that is going to be huge in comparison and I also want to be able to figure out what kind of container I want to use in it because I probably want to put containers that I can pull out, throw in my freezer, let them refreeze. And while that's going on, I have some in the freezer that I just got done freezing. I can throw them in there so I can keep going and just rotate them. Just like I would with Ryobi batteries and some kind of power that I'm trying to uh, keep going. I can rotate the batteries in and out. 
same theory, but doing it with the ice. So anyway, this is my thoughts, and I think I can put together something perpetual so that if the power goes off, I can use that little air cooler type of setup for us. And if it's made compact enough, I should be able to move it from in, let's say, the living room if we're both in there. And then I can move it into the bedroom and we can have it in there when we go to bed at night. And it would probably help with keeping us cooler at night then. So these are just some of my thoughts about a cooler and how am I going to survive if I don't have air conditioning? Because here, could I get by without the air? Yeah, I could always do without the air, but it would be damn uncomfortable, especially for she can't take the heat quite as well as I can. But honestly, I can't take the heat near like I used to be able to. Uh, so it would be nice to have some kind of cooling system, emergency backup, because there's no way you can really run an air conditioner without putting tons of money in battery and solar panels in order to operate something that draws that much current. So I don't see myself having a good backup system that will also run the air conditioner in the near future. If technology changes, maybe that will too. But as of right now, no, none of that will happen. So I do want to keep my, and I like to keep things simple anyway. If I'm going to have to go against what is normal, which is being on grid and turn the light on and it works. I don't care how much power it's pulling. When you go from that to an off-grid system where you have to monitor and manage and not overdo it and make sure you're doing things as efficient as possible, and if I go to that environment, um, I probably will have to face up to the idea that I have to find other ways to keep myself comfortably cool. And yes, not only would an air cooler do wonders, just a simple fan with maybe a Ryobi battery in it would be a great way of doing it. But there's also um, uh, another thing that really does help when it's really hot out and you want to get cooled off is cold showers. So as long as my well pump is running, I can do the show cold shower thing two or three times a day if I have to. So there's lots of ways to cool off. And in this area of the country, we don't get the kind of heat that'll really get you like it does in some other parts of the country. So, uh, but it has to be a dry cooling, I guess is my point. So the, the one I design will have to be one that doesn't give you an increase in humidity as it cools the air. You want it to be a dry cool instead of a uh, humid cool. So anyway, those are my thoughts. That's kind of where I'm at with stuff. I'm still doing little things around here. I really want to put together, if you're interested, I don't know if you're even interested or not, uh, but I got a, a box back here, a leather hinge, some relays and switches in here, and I'm going to make an off-grid light that plugs into the wall outlet. And when the light, when the switch is on, there's no power uh, the light doesn't come on but if the power goes off off and all of a sudden the plug-in doesn't have power to it then the light will turn on automatically so that if I lose power in the house this light will turn on so at least you have some light <laughs> so you can walk around rather than walking in the dark to find your first flashlight and so this will be a nice little switch and we're gonna put that in a central location so that if the power goes out this light goes on and everything kind of keeps moving right along. Uh, at least allows me a time to be able to get things set up if I need to and gives me enough light to get started on doing those things. So I think that is a handy light to have. I saw a guy make one using a Ryobi battery and he did it by using a 3D printer for everything he was done. I don't have a 3D printer so I thought I would take a play off of his video and show you how you could do it by just using shop made stuff instead. So I'm using the same electrical co components that he used, only I am going to use my way of fixing everything up so that it will work for somebody that doesn't have a 3D printer can still build this light if they wanna make themselves a, an emergency light. So, and mine will run off of a inexpensive Ryobi battery, little one and a half, um, uh, I'm gonna, amp hour batteries, the smaller ones. I have a, I have several of those that are getting up there in age. But they still have that use. 
uh, and I'll use one of those and I'll just rotate that out every six months to a year to a new battery so uh, but you could easily run this off of any 12 volt or 18 20 volt battery uh, because one of the things that this unit will use is those same uh, low voltage bulbs that I showed you how to do a Ryobi light just quick and easy and it runs directly the the bulb runs off of any, on DC current anywhere from 9 volts up to 24 volts so any kind of power source in that range will light the light bulb out up and it's not a bad little light it's like 60 watts so uh, and I do have a couple of Ryobi light, uh, battery plug-ins those types of lights that I can then grab and set up and have some Ryobi lights in the house running off of those if I need it so anyway that same bulb is really what's going to make this project possible too so I am going to work on that I think here yeah, pretty quick when I get back in the shop and so I'll show you what that is and how it works when I get it done and see what you think and maybe it's something that you might be interested in making your own and making it to be your own so anyway I want to thank you for coming by if you have any thoughts or questions I want to thank you for staying this long if you're still there uh, if you learned something here you like this video hit that like button it lets me know I'm doing something right most importantly though please come back again because I'm nowhere near done thanks we'll see you guys again very soon